Hello, everyone. Welcome to theCUBE here in Palo Alto, California for CUBE Conversation. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. This is a KubeCon preview conversation. We've got a great guest here in studio, Manhura Mask Aski, co founder and VP of product, head of product at Platform Nine. Manhura, great to see you. Thank you for coming in and sharing this uh, conversation about this CUBE conversation about KubeCon, a KubeCon conversation. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, like, nice play on words there, a little word play, but you know, yep. the fun thing about the CUBE is we were there at the beginning when OpenStack was kind of on its, on its transition. KubeCon, Kubernetes was just starting. I remember talking to Lou Tucker back in, I think Seattle or some event, um, and Craig McLucky was still working at Google at the time, and Google was debating on putting the paper out and so much has happened, being present at creation, you guys have been there too with Platform 9, present at creation of the Kubernetes wave was not obvious, only a few insiders kind of got the big picture. Uh, we were one of them, we saw this as a big wave. Docker Containers at that time was a unicorn funded company, now they've went back to their roots a few years ago. I think four years ago they went back and re recapped and now they're all pure open source. Since then, Docker containers and containers have really powered the Kubernetes wave. Combined with the amazing work of the CNCF and KubeCon, which we've been covering every year, you saw the maturation, you saw the wave, you know, the early days, end user uh, projects being contributed, like Envoy has been a huge success. And then the, the, the white space is filling in on the map. You got observability, you got, you know, you have runtime, you got all the things, still some white spaces in there, but it's really been great to watch this growth. So I have to ask you, what do you expect this year? You guys have some cutting edge uh, technology, you got Arlo announced, um, and you know, a lot's going on Kubernetes this year. It's going mainstream. You're starting to see the traditional enterprises embrace it. Some are scaling faster than others, managed services, plethora of choices. What do you expect this year at KubeCon North America in Detroit? Yeah, so you know, I think and I think you summarized kind of that life cycle or lifeline of you know Kubernetes pretty well. I think I remember the times when just at the very beginning of Kubernetes after it was released, uh, we were sitting I think with Box, uh, you know, Box.com, and uh, they were describing to us uh, why they are early adopters of Kubernetes and we were, you know, just sitting down taking notes trying to understand, um, you know, this new project and why, you know, what, what value it adds, right? And then flash forward to today where, um, you know, there, there are Dilbert strips written about Kubernetes. That's how popular it has become. Um, so I think uh, as, as that has happened, I think one of the things that also happened is the, the enterprises that adopted it relatively early are running it at a massive scale or looking to run it at massive scale, right? And, 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 and so I think at scale, cloud native is going to be the most important theme. Um, at scale governance, at scale manageability are going to be top of the mind. And the third factor I think that's going to be top of the mind is cost control at scale. Yeah, and one of the things that we've seen is that the, the incubated projects, a lot more being incubated now, and you got the, the, the combination of end user and company contributed open source. You guys are contributing Arlo in open source. Yep. That's been part of your, your game plan there. So you guys are no stranger to open source. How do you see this year's momentum? Is it more white space being fill, filled? What's new coming out of the block? What do you think's going to come out of this year? What's rising in terms of traction? What do you see emerging as more notable that might not have been there uh, last year? Yeah, so I think um, it, it's all about filling that white space, you know, some level of consolidation, et cetera, right? That's usually the trend in the cloud native space. And I think it's going to continue to be on that, uh, and it's going to be tooling that lets users simplify their lives uh, now that Kubernetes is part of your day-to-day, -day, right? And so it is, um, you know, observability, et cetera, have always been top of the mind. But I think starting this year, et cetera, it's going to be at the next level, right, which is gone are the times of just running your Prometheus at individual cluster level, just to take that as an example. Now you need yep. a solution that operates at this massive scale across different distributions and your edge locations, right? So it's taking those same problems, but taking them to that next order um, of management. I'm looking at my notes here, you know, and I see orchestration and service mesh, which Envoy does, and you're seeing other solutions come out as well, um, like Linkerd and whatnot. Some are more popular than others. What areas do you see are most needed? If you could go in there and 
be program chair for a day. Uh, and you've got a day job as VP of product at Platform 9, so you kind of have to have that future view of the roadmap and looking back at where you've come. What, what, uh, what would you want to <laughs> prioritize if you can bring your VP of product skills to the, to the open source and saying, hey, can I, you know, can I point out some needs here? What would you say? Yeah, you know, I think just the, the more tooling that lets, lets people um, make sense uh, and reduce some of the chaos that um, you know the, the the sprawling ecosystem of cloud native creates, right? Which is um, you know tooling that is not uh, you know adding more tooling that covers white space is great, but um, introducing abilities that let you better manage what you have today is probably absolutely top of the mind. And I think that's that's really not covered today in terms of tools that are around. You know, I've been watching the top five incubated projects. Um, in, the, uh, in CNCF. Argo cracked the top five. I think they got um, close to 12,000 GitHub stars. They have a conference now, ArgoCon, uh, here in California. What is that about? What's yeah. the, why is that so popular? I mean, I know it's kind of about, you know, obviously workflows and, and dealing with uh, you know, a good, good pipeline, but what's the, what's, why is that so popular right now? I think it's, it's very interesting, right? And I think Argo's journey has just climbed up in terms of its GitHub stars, for example, right? And I think it's, it's because as, as these you know, scale factors that we talk about on one end, number of nodes and clusters growing, and on the other end, number of sites you're managing uh, you know, grows, I think that CD or continuous deployment of applications, uh, it used to kind of be something that you, you want to get to, it's that North Star, but most, most enterprises wouldn't quite be there. They would either think that they're, they're not ready and they're, it, it's not needed enough to get there. But now, when you're operating at that level of scale and to still maintain uh, you know, consistency, um, without skyrocketing your costs in terms of ops people, right? Um, CD almost becomes a necessity, right? You need some kind of manageable, predictable way of deploying apps uh, without having to go out with new releases that are going out every six months or so. You need to do that on a daily basis, even hourly basis, and that's why. Scale's the theme good. again, back to yeah. scale. Yep. All right, final question, we'll wrap up this preview for KubeCon in Detroit, uh, whereas we lay, start getting the, the lay of the land and, 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 and the focus. If you had to kind of predict the psychology of the developer that's going to be attending in person, and they're going to have a hybrid event, so you know, they will be not as good as being in person. Obviously, it's going to be the first time kind of post-pandemic when I think everyone's going to be together. LA, it was a weird time in the calendar, and obviously Valencia was, was the kind of the first international one. But this is the first time in North America, so we're expecting a big audience. Mm -hmm. If you could predict, or what's your view on the psychology of the, the attendee this year? Um, obviously pumped to be back, but what do you think they're going to be thinking about? What's on their mind? What are they going to be peaked on? What's the focus? Where will be the psychology? Where will be the mindset? What are people going to be looking for this year? If you had to make a prediction on what the attendees uh, are going to be thinking about, what would you say? Yeah, so there's always a curiosity in terms of what's new, what are, you know, what n uh, new cool tools that are coming out that's going to, you know, help address some of the gaps, what can I try out? That's always, as I go back to my development roots, that's, you know, first in, my, uh, in mind, but then very quickly it comes down to what's going to help me uh, you know, m do my job easier, better, faster uh, at lower cost. And I think, again, I keep going back to that theme of automation, you know, declarative automation, automation at scale, governance at scale. These are going to be top of the mind for both developers and ops teams. We'll be there covering it like a blanket, like we always do from day one. President Creation at KubeCon, we are, you know, going to be covering again for the, the consecutive year in a row. We love the CNCF, we love what they do. We think the developers this year, again, continue to going mainstream, closer and closer to the front lines as the, the company is the application, as we say here on theCUBE, we'll be there bringing you all the signal. Uh, thanks for coming in and sharing your, your thoughts on KubeCon 2022. Thank you for having me. Okay, I'm John Furrier here in theCUBE in Palo Alto, California. Thanks for watching. <laughs>